next. Uh, uh, as we know that uh, Indonesian government has officially assigned electric vehicle in Indonesia. Uh, electric vehicle is considered as uh, the most appropriate green technology to be applied in the transportation field for reducing energy use and uh, CO2 emission. And the urgency of EV implementation is uh, first that transportation contributes 23% of 23% of global CO2 emission uh, as increases the number of vehicles. The transportation sector is a contributor with the fastest growing CO2 emission and the transportation sector is the sector with the highest commercial energy consumption in Indonesia. And in the Paris Agreement, Indonesia is committed to reduce CO2 emission 29% by on its own effort and 41% by establishing international cooperation. And why it should be EV? Because if we have advantages, uh, if it has a zero direct emission, uh, it's possible to use renewable energy, uh, reduce the dependence on fossil fuel, a low level noise pollution and energy efficiency is greater than CV and based on the result of the LCA conducted with Hawkins, uh, if we can reduce the global warming potential by 20 to 24% compared to the gasoline based vehicle. Next. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, implementation of EV in Indonesia has uh, several challenges, uh, not only in Indonesia, but in uh, all countries that implementing EV. Uh, the barriers of EV uh, cause the low level of public acceptance. The first barriers is limited the availability of charging station, uh, high purchase price of EV because of its high uh, better price and limited drive range because of its limited battery capacity and long charging time and low environmental awareness of Indonesia uh, according to purchase decision, uh, according to the vehicle purchase decision. And Indonesia government has a strategy to face the challenge by issued several policies like uh, provide tax tax incentive for if we purchase tax, a uh, profit tax incentive for annual tax, uh, provide electricity price incentive, provide parking fee and toll price incentive and uh, some other convenience. Next. Uh, in order to success EV implementation, increasing public acceptance is important because uh, the success of or failure of EV implementation is determined by the level of public acceptance of EV. Uh, and this statement is reinforced by several statements from research that low public acceptance of EV is seen as a strong obstacle of EV market division process, uh, successful of EV implementation can only be achieved if user accept EV, purchase EV, and then use it in daily activity. And in order to increase user acceptance, it is important to understand uh, user acceptance on EV first, uh, including what the factor uh, influence and the, recent, and the relationship with the government strategies and based on the statement from several researchers said that the user acceptance of a new technology is a complex, a dynamic process that depends on numerous elements and influenced by several many aspects and interconnected actors. So it is need a holistic approach, uh, such a system to understand if we user acceptance. So uh, based on that, the, this research objective is to develop a conceptual model that can be used to investigate the complex dynamic relationship among factors and linkage the government policies affecting the 
EV adoption in Indonesia. Next. And before develop a user acceptance model, it is needed to understand the consumer decision making behavior in vehicle adoption because the EV adoption is close related to decision making whether we'll choose EV or another type of vehicle uh, as a private vehicle. And based on the literature study, if we understand decision making behavior is influenced by uh, multiple factors and we classify them in five classification there are social influence financial quality performance infrastructure and government incentives okay, next next and the implementation of EV in Indonesia also influenced by several stakeholders who have different objective and role. Uh, there are user, uh, Indonesian society, uh, Indonesian government as the main actor as and policy maker, a state electricity company who supply electricity, a charging provider from uh, a state or a private company, uh, oil company, and EV industry who provide an EV in the market. Next. Next. And as a result, uh, a system diagram is presented to illustrate uh, EV implementation problem comprehensively. Uh, the problem owner of EV implementation is Indonesian government with the goal is to increase EV adoption in urban area in order to reduce CO2 emission and from transportation sector. Uh, and police, policies used in the system is our tax incentive, electricity price incentive and uh, fuel subsidies. And there are several stakeholders like user, uh, state electricity company, and EV industry. Uh, and this is the input, the process of the output. Uh, next. And this is the causal loop diagram. Uh, the causal loop diagram illustrates the dynamics uh, behavioral of EV adoption. Uh, the main the main variable of the system is new sales of EV and it is represent consumer intention to adopt EV which is followed by buying behavior and uh, EV adoption uh, is influenced by several factors like uh, promotion, word of mouth, uh, financial benefit of EV quality performance, uh, and infrastructure readiness. Uh, there are two loops in the system. Uh, it is social finance, so, social influence loop and infrastructure loop. Next. Uh, a social influence Social influence loop, it is uh, explain uh, the word of man of in EV adoption process. The word of man is communication between EV drivers and EV potential uh, involving their experience or opinion about uh, EV. Uh, and this loop uh, explain the more EV volume, the more driver of EV is the more people talk about EV, the more people uh, in social system aware of EV and the more people may choose EV as a private a vehicle and the contact effectiveness of social influence loop this is uh, the pre represent the percentage of EV potential adopters who are influenced by uh, EV adopters and uh, the second loop is infrastructure loop uh, the charging availability is important to meet the driving needs of EV driver as if the driver range is limited to the battery capacity and EV and charging station uh, are illustrated as a strong complementary good cases. Okay. You have uh, 
30 seconds to finish your presentation. Okay, and on this, uh, in addition, the rapid launch of charge extension requires sufficient EV volume in operation. Uh, so the increased charging number of charging station uh, of EV will increase the infrastructure readiness level of EV implementation and an increase of infrastructure will, in, will eliminate the anxiety of uh, potential of doctors about the limitation, the driving range, and they are willing to adopt uh, EV. Next. Next. And the summary of this research is that this, re this study developed a conceptual model uh, of EV adoption process in Indonesia and, uh, and the model uh, Develop using causal loop diagram, which form the basis of dynamic system approach, and then the system diagram developed to understand the EV adoption process comprehensively related to the problem owner of EV adoption, the objective uh, to be achieved, and stakeholder involved in full process and output, and the policy in intervention that can affect the outcome. And the limitation of this research is that this is. This, this research is limited to the development conceptual model and it is needed for the research uh, to develop a stock flow diagram uh, based on the conceptual model uh, that can be used to analyze the policy intervention effect on the system both quantitatively and qualitatively. Uh, this, is, this is it and thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sihidamayanti. Um, uh, I would like to invite for only one question because we are already uh, out of time. Is there any question from the uh, audience? Any question? Okay, if not, then uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Hidabayanti. Uh, success with your research uh, so we can continue to the next next presentation okay thank this, you thank you mr yeah. yeah welcome okay the next presentation will be from uh, mr tami wijaya and romadani ardi it's about a multi-generation perspective on public transportation use in the greater jakarta area a conceptual model so um i would like to invite uh, mr tami wijaya to present uh, her presentation the operator will uh, arrange the uh, slide presentation. Yeah. The time and floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Tabi Wijaya from Universitas Indonesia. So today I want to present you my paper about transportation with the title of Multi-Generation Perspective on Public Transportation Use in the Greater Jakarta Area, a conceptual model. Um, by me and Mr. Ramadani are as the orders and without any further ado let's start the presentation next here's the outline for today's presentation next uh, we're going to start with the introduction next Uh, in 2016, World Health Organization estimated 4.2 million per meter deaths because of air pollution. Also, particulate matter 2.5 exposure contributes to 2 million per meter deaths per year. One of the sources of these particles is for transport sector. Previous research have confirmed motor vehicles contribute 20% to 30% to total PM 2.5 emissions. The average growth rate of private cars and motorcycles in Indonesia reaches 6.48% and 5.3% in the last five years. It also contributes to traffic congestion. To measure air quality in certain areas, some countries use air quality index. In Jakarta, air quality index value had reached 170, which indicates the air, the air quality is unhealthy for people and could harm everyone. Next. Next, one of the solutions to reduce these problems is to encourage people to use public transportation. Previous studies have already conducted to increase the number of public transportation passengers, and they found that the choice of transportation mode is determined by psychosocial factor. 
Furthermore, with full knowledge of the factors, it could help policymakers making strategies to increase public transportation usage. Also, personal values describe behavior norms that can affect attitudes towards certain objects and types of behavior. So it is important to know the relationship between people's personal value and their behavior in using public transportation to reduce private vehicle. Next. One of the theory that widely used in predicting and explaining that relationship is theory of planned behavior or TPB. Also, public transportation such as MRT, LRT, BRT, or ANCOT could be viewed as new terms of technology from certain travelers. So to understand the technology acceptance of the users, we use technology acceptance model or TAM. Factors such as environmental concern and demographics are also found to be related to public transportation or preferred vehicle use. As we know, the age range of people who use public transportation varies greatly. As an impact, it creates a generation cohort in both users such as Generation X or Y as known as Millennial. So the purpose of this paper is to provide a conceptual model to understand Generation X and Y's willingness to use public transportation in Indonesia, especially in Jakarta. And for the aim is to develop a conceptual model that integrated TPB, TAM, environmental concern, and demographics to see their effects on Generation X and Y's behavioral intention to use public transportation. Next. Uh, these are the literature review. Next. A general cohort is usually share the same values, belief, attitudes, and idea based on their birth during the same period. In a transportation context, it may influence people's behavior in choosing the mode of travel. As you can see from the table that Gen X and Y have differences in mobility, such as Gen X is likely used car from time to time, meanwhile Gen Y is likely takes public transit. Next. Uh, TBP and TAM is some a variety of reasons which includes attitudes, subjective norms, perceptions of behavior control, perceived ease of use, and perceived usefulness in making, in making intentions to perform certain behaviors. However, TAM has a limitation which is ignore social influence in technology acceptance. Therefore, to cover that limitation, this paper integrated TBB and TAM so it could define Gen X and Y's behavior regarding the use of new technology, in this case, the public transportation. Next. Main components of TPB are subjective norm, attitude, and perceived behavior control. And all these factors would influence individuals' intention and behavior. Meanwhile, for TAM, our perceived is obvious, perceived usefulness, and this would lead to the usage of certain technologies. Next. And these are the description of those components. Next. Uh, for the concept, uh, this is the uh, uh, for the conceptual model for this research. They use several references from previous research about public transportation to construct a model. The first one was from Chan and Chow. They use integration of TPB and TAM and also habit. From the visa, it was found that TAM and TPB variables have significant effect on behavior intention. Next. The second one was from Borhan. He added environmental concern as a predictor that might affect attitude or behavior intention. The result shows that environmental concern has significant effect on behavior intention through attitude. Next. And the last one was from Anwar, where he added demographics as a predictor that might affect willingness to pay. Uh, the result shows that demography has a significant effect on willingness to pay MRT in Jakarta. Next. Um, so based on those illiterate reviews, the artist concluded the proposed conceptual model from this study. This suggested model can be used to understand the behavior and intention of using public transportation for Gen X and Y. As we can see from the picture that the model uses TPB, TAM, environmental concern, and demographics. Next. The next section is about hypothesis development and discussion. Next. Kitchen and Chow integrated TPB, TAM, and habit. All the TPB and TAM variables shows a significant effect on behavior intention. The first variable we are going to discuss is from TAM, which is perceived is obvious. 
it indicates that a well-functioning system design will improve positive perception towards public transportation as new transportation technology. Furthermore, the variable also has a direct effect on perceived usefulness. It implying that the usefulness of a new technology depends on the ease of use. And for the perceived usefulness, is a subjective probability that utilize certain parts of technology that will expedite a person's way to finish particular particular activities. Our study also showed that this variable has you a have significant three more minutes. Okay, um, positive effects on behavior, intention, and sometimes it's mediated by attitude. Next. And for the attitude, Fu said that attitude is an evolution toward the public transportation service attributes. Furthermore, by providing convenient, comfortable, and safe public transportation, it would increase a person's positive attitude toward public transportation and might use it. For the subjective norm, Fu and Juen suggested that the use of the public transportation would effectively be encouraged if the pro-public transportation atmosphere is high enough, and this and this atmosphere could be gained by using such could be gained by using social media platform. Next. For the perceived behavior control or PBC, it emerges from control over behavior performance when a person assesses how easy or difficult it is to perform the behavior. The result from Chen shows that PBC is not significant on car users, but significant on motorcycle users. It indicates that car users might perceive great difficulties related to public transit compared to their car use behavior. Next. And for the environmental concern, private vehicle user that has a great awareness of environmental problem tend to feel more responsible and guilty for the problems that caused by private vehicle use. And as an impact, they use their car less and increase the intention to use public transportation. Next. For the demographics, the use of demographics factor is to understand an individual's actual behavior depending on their demographic status. In onward research, he found that only money expenditure has a significant effect on willingness to pay MRT in Jakarta. Okay. It indicates that an individual's income could determine their behavior in using public transportation. Next. Sorry, maybe you can skip uh, into the uh, conclusion. Okay, these are yeah. the hypotheses. Con okay. So these are the conclusion. People should be encouraged to use public transportation to reduce air pollution and traffic congestion. So it is essential to identify factors that will affect Gen X and Y's behavior in using public transportation. These variables then used to create a conceptual model that could help researchers and practitioners to encourage Gen X and Y to use public transportation rather than a private vehicle. This research is still at an early, early stage to understand Gen X and Y's willingness to use public transportation. So it is necessary to conduct future research regarding this topic by using a conceptual model that provided from this research. Okay, and um, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tami Vijaya. It's a very interesting presentation. So okay. I'd like to invite uh, the audience uh, for a question. Is there any question? from the audience. Okay, maybe I have uh, one question to Ms. Tami. Okay. Uh, because you, uh, this is uh, only a conceptual model uh, mm -hmm. that you will do, uh, you will conduct a future research. So if uh, based on your uh, observation, let's say, yeah, uh, what will be the Gen X and Gen Y uh, the way they use public transportation, whether the Gen X is uh, uh, prefer more to use public transportation compared to Gen Y or vice versa. Uh, okay, uh, can we back to the slide number previous, previous slide? Okay, previous slide. Previous, previous, previous. Previous, previous. Then more. Okay, this one. No, next, next, next. Ah. Okay. Uh, from this table, we can see that Gen X is more dependent on an automobile because they uh, grew up with automobile and because 
um, car means that uh, personal freedom and social interactions and also economic freedom and also the social status. And Gen Y is more open-minded about a public transportation and they tend to, uh, they tend to uh, less likely to drive, that's it, from the pre previous research. Okay. Yeah. And you are Gen Y, yeah? Yeah, I'm a millionaire because I was okay. born in 1997. And you prefer to use uh, public transport or uh, private? Sometimes it's, I use car, but sometimes I also use public transport. Okay, maybe that's uh, uh, one of the part of the research you should also, you can also uh, look into the uh, opportunity of each um, person, either they are uh, Gen X or Gen Y, uh, based on the situation. Because yeah. if you do not have any private car, I think every people, most likely they will choose for public transport. Yeah. Okay, thank uh, you, thank Mr. Tami Wijaya. Yeah, thank you. Um, Thank you very much and success for your research. I think we can now uh, continue our presentation to the next uh, presenters. So I would like to invite the third presenter. It's about the drivers and barriers in of industry 4.0 adoption in Indonesian manufacturing industry by uh, Ms. Baby Lexa Reskianita and uh, Tomadani Ali. Uh, the operator will prepare for the slides. So. Uh, Miss Baby, uh, please, the floor and time is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bibi Lexares Janita, and there is Mr. Padani Ardi. We're from the Department of Industrial Engineering, Universitas Indonesia. This morning, I'd like to present our paper about drivers and barriers of industry for point adoption in Indonesian manufacturing industry. Today, I'll be covering, uh, next, today, I'll be covering these four key points. Uh, interaction, literature review, methodology, results, and conclusion. Next slide. Next. Okay. First thing first, I'd like to introduce briefly about Industry 4.0. Let's move to the next slide. It is uh, okay. Please move to the next slide. It's Industry 4.0 is a digital revolution in industrial production, which enhances the connectivity and computerization. Industry 4.0 forms smart factory with cyber physical systems or CPS that integrate the physical world with the digital world. Industry 4.0 increases productivity, revenue, business competitiveness, and customer service. Next. Get this next slide. In Indonesia, the manufacturing industry gives highest contribution to GDP and exports. Therefore, the Minister of Industry of Indonesia launched an integrated roadmap as strategy to deal with Industry 4.0 and it is called Making Indonesia 4.0. And the uh, Ministry of Industry also released Indonesian Industry 4.0 Readiness Index, or Indy 4.0, as a reference to measure the readiness of industry to implement Industry 4.0. Next slide. Okay, please move to the next slide. Based on a report from the Ministry of Industry as per 2019, the average of readiness index uh, of our Indy 4.0 from five priority manufacturing sectors is two. 14, which is in medium readiness stage. Therefore, identification of the drivers and barriers of the adoption of Industry 4.0 is essential to be able to determine strategies that utilize the drivers and overcome the barriers so that the adoption of Industry 4.0 will increase in the Indonesian manufacturing industry. So we can move to the next readiness stage of Industry 4.0. Next slide. Let's, move here. Let's take a look at previous research about Industry 4.0 in Indonesia. There is a development of conceptual model regarding the effect of the implementation of Industry 4.0. There is also a taxonomy of Industry 4.0 implementation strategy based on statistical analysis. And there is synergy between green industry and Industry 4.0 by characteristic comparison. However, research on drivers and barriers of the manufacturing industry adopting Industry 4.0 in Indonesia is still limited. Therefore, this research will identify drivers and barriers of Industry 4.0 adoption in the manufacturing industry. Next slide. Okay, next, I'd like to share the literature review. Please move. Yeah. Industry 4.0 is driven by four disruptions. First, destination rise in data, computational power, and connectivity. Two, the emergence of analytics and business intelligence capabilities. Three, 
human machine interaction, and four improvements in transferring digital instructions in the physical world. Okay, next slide. There are, six, there are nine pillars of Industry 4.0, nine technology, which are autonomous robots, simulation, system integration, cyber physical system, big data and analytics, the cloud, additive manufacturing, augmented reality, and internet of things. Okay, next slide. Now let me explain the methodology of this research. Next. The list of drivers and barriers of industry 4.0 adoption was collected from literature studies. Then the collected drivers and barriers were validated by interviewing the experts. Expert E is the general manager of a company with the highest index of Indy 4.0 among food and beverage companies. Expert B is from electronics industry and expert C is from certification services company. Expert B and expert C are created by Indonesian Ministry of Industry to be the part of making Indonesia 4.0 team. Next slide. Uh, the experts were allowed to add drivers and bears which have not listed yet. And based on their knowledge and experience, experts chose between valid and not valid of drivers and bears list. And drivers and bears which were validated at least by one expert will be chosen as valid drivers and bears. Okay, next. So the result uh, is, okay, next. Okay, the interviews generated 19 drivers and 24 barriers. As you can see, let's uh, move to the next slide. Okay, maybe we can jump to the slide 19 to discuss about drivers and barriers further. Okay, sorry, uh, slide 20. Okay, uh, now let's discuss about uh, drivers and barriers further. Experts highlighted government programs as one of the main drivers of industry 4.0 adoption, and the absence of government programs also become one of the main barriers. And we can see uh, the drivers uh, from government is program uh, super, de super deduction tax program, innovation center, in 4.0, and the barriers from the absence of uh, government policy, like policy about ecosystem, policy about data security, lack of government in infrastructure, and lack of incentives and standards. Okay, next. When the government use media or policy to allocate more resources for innovation, companies are more likely to respond to adopt new technology, which is in a super point of And experts also highlighted the absence of of government policy called inhibit industry 4.0 adoption, and there should be no overlapping regulations and policies. Government regulations should protect the company from data piracy and job losses that should not hamper new technologies utilization. Indonesia should focus on AI, artificial intelligence, and big data adoption instead of robotics because a lot of labor needs to be absorbed in Indonesia. Thanks. Okay, from the dimension of market condition, from the drivers, uh, we can obtain a uh, uh, competitor pressure and market trend. Intensified competition in market and rapid changes in demand have pushed companies to adopt advanced technologies to maintain excellence or respond to customer demand. And investing in industry 4.0 technologies makes the company able to improve comparative advantage and produce competitive advantages compared to its competitors. Next. The existence of competition with competitors makes the company more current and innovative. With the increase in technology, flexibility is increased in response responding to customer needs and resulted to better customer satisfaction. Okay, next. Yes. Yeah. From the dimension of organization, there are three drivers uh, which are reducing cost, resources and capability, and top management. Reducing cost, adapting the industry 4.0 will provide many financial benefits, such as the reduction in the cost of operations and inventory. The, the opportunity of cost reduction is impactful to promote digital Organization or transformation to industry 4.0. Next, for the resources and capability. Uh, company resources availability influence the ability of the company to evaluate, accept, and implement new technology to achieve higher objectives. So, the, so it becomes the driver. And policies from company leaders show how top management supports the industry 4.0 adoption. The company strategy, company investment, and commitment from top management are crucial to the successful transformation of industry 4.0.
Yes, yeah. Okay. Next. Next. Okay. And from the productivity and efficiency, like reducing error rate, improve time, reduce cycle time, improve data transparency, reduce downtime, they are very impactful drivers to adopt industry performance. Next. From the ecosystem of industry, uh, we can open the drivers like Lighthouse Access, Discussion Forum, Technology Provider, Academic Curriculum, Apprenticeship, and Research of Industry 4.0. Next. Next. Yeah, we can move to the barriers. Okay, first, uh, from financial barriers, uh, which are implementation costs and financial sources. Significant amount of financial support may inhibit companies to adopt Industry 4.0. And limited access to financial resources and so an obstacle. So the company needs to invest in transforming the production system into Industry 4.0 as monitored long-term long investment plan. So next. Next. Barriers. From the human resources dimension, there, there are lack of competence from leaders, limited skilled leaders, lack of competence from the workforce, limited skilled workers, lack of ability to identify opportunities, lack of commitment, lack of external experts, and training time. Next. Okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, from the organization, we can uh, obtain complexity of change, lack of knowledge, inherent habits, strategy making difficulties, limited knowledge management, specific lighthouse, and lack of interest infrastructure. Next. Okay, next barriers. Next barriers. Okay, from the technology, uh, there are cybersecurity and storage capacity, which are the barriers uh, for company to adopt in a super point. Then we can move to the conclusion. Okay, time is up. Maybe you okay. can go to your conclusion. Okay, okay. The next slide is conclusion. Yes. yes. Okay, so this study identifies 19 drivers from the five dimensions and 24 barriers from five dimensions to of industry for point adoption in the medium manufacturing industry through literature review and expert interviews. The driver's dimension consists of government, market condition, organization, productivity, and efficiency, and industry ecosystem. The barriers dimension consists of financial, organization, human resources, government, and technology. In future, in, in future research, strategies can be designed to, to <laughs> utilize the drivers and overcome the barriers. So the adoption of Industry 4.0 can be increased in the Indonesian manufacturing industry. Okay, uh, so that's for, for me. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bilexa. Uh, uh, interesting research about the Industry 4.0. Uh, is there any question from the audience? So I would like to invite the audience to ask question if uh, there is any. No? Okay, maybe I, I have a... Uh, uh, please, yes. Yeah. Ini, yeah. Okay. Okay, baby Lexa, thank you very much. I want to ask, what's your opinion about barrier? What do you think the first priority of barrier that we need to overcome to, to implement the industry 4.0? Okay. Uh, from the, so the, this paper is only uh, validating the barriers from the experts. But uh, in, I actually, I, I also have uh, conduct the research. Uh, I use uh, the metal based INP to obtain the uh, ranking uh, from bears and drivers, and which is uh, and which one is the the most uh, the most factor that inhibit the industry for point oil adoption. And from my uh, from my uh, research, maybe I should uh, share screen or I just. Okay, from the from the uh, from my research, the most uh, influence influential uh, barriers is uh, implementation costs. Maybe because the in a super point of adoption uh, needs a uh, high cost from the for because of the technology. And the uh, infrastructure, like in terms, uh, like robotics, uh, and uh, an advantage, uh, 
additive manufacturing, and so on and so on. So, uh, from my research, uh, the financial barriers uh, was is at, is at the top of barriers. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you, Nikan. Okay, is that clear? Is Nikan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's clear. Okay, um, thank you, uh, baby Lexa. I think uh, we can uh, continue the next uh, presentation. Uh, and good luck with your research. Uh, and yeah, I hope that uh, you can uh, finish your research in timely manner. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. The next um, presentation will be from uh, Ms. Nadila Zahrina. It's about model conceptualization of battery swapping industry development using system dynamics. So I would like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Nadira Zahrina to present uh, her uh, papers. The operator will prepare for the slide presentation. Uh, the time and uh, floor is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, next slide, slide please. Uh, all right, now before I start talking about the main point of uh, my presentation, I want you to know that uh, the government of Indonesia has committed to reducing GHG emission by promoting the acceleration program of uh, battery vehicles for road transport through the presidential regulation number 55 of 2019. Uh, concerning the increase of GHG emission. Electric vehicles has been appointed uh, for its effectivity in uh, reducing CO2 emission. Uh, here we can see a study conducted by Setiawan et al. Uh, they model and do the simulation of four different policies. Uh, among uh, these policies, uh, EV gives the most significant results compared to other scenarios. Uh, here we can see that uh, oil fuel consumption will have reduced 26% by 2050, while CO2 emission will have reduced 7% uh, by 2050. Uh, I'm sorry for the mistakenly written number. Next, next slide, please. Uh, so, through the presidential regulation number 55 of 2019, uh, the GOI has committed to giving fiscal incentives such as tax allowance for automotive and battery industry, uh, funding support for R&D center and the charging station and uh, battery swapping infrastructure development and discount on charging fee for electric motorcycle user. And through the Ministry of Indus Industry Initiative on Automotive Industry Development, starting from uh, 2020, uh, the GOI has committed to building required infrastructure such as charging station and the battery swapping station, uh, also incentivizing the adoption of electric motorcycle, establishing R&D center, and building domestic production capabilities for uh, electric motorcycle. Uh, next, next slide, please. Unfortunately, to be adopted in mass scale, there are several challenges to be addressed. Uh, the first is the high purchase price of the electric motorcycle. Currently, motorcycles have uncompetitive price uh, compared to the conventional motorcycles, and also uh, the quiet long charging time that makes electric motorcycle uh, impractical for a long trip. Also, uh, electric motorcycles have a far shorter driving range than conventional motorcycles, and the lack of infrastructure availability that impacts the motorcycle attractiveness. Uh, such impediments have slowed down the electric motorcycle's adoption. A battery swapping scheme has appeared to offer a solution for the prior problems, in which users only need to change their depleted batteries with the charged ones. It helps eliminate long charging time and driving range anxiety, as well as reduce the purchase price of electric motorcycles, since users only rent the batteries and not buy them. Next slide, please. Uh, although the battery swapping offers uh, some advantages, there are still several things that need attention before battery swapping infrastructure development. Uh, the first is urgency of interchangeable batteries. The batteries used in the electric motorcycle must have similar architecture that it can be interchangeable. The battery swapping provider must also pay attention to maintain the quality of the batteries because the different driving behavior of each user may affect uh, the battery conditions. Since the user do not own the batteries, the maintenance cost of the batteries will be charged to the user. 
Another challenge for the battery strapping provider is that despite the big amount of investment required, it also needs to provide an affordable service. Moreover, the battery strapping provider should be profitable in order to be sustainable and keep providing the service to the electric motorcycle user. We can see that in order to realize that but, uh, the battery strapping development, it has a risen complexity. It involves many stakeholders with uh, each responsibility and interest and other relevant elements that are interconnected with one another, of which their behavior change over time. Next slide, please. So uh, we know that the system of battery swapping industrial development itself is complex due to the involvement of many stakeholders and also the dynamic due to the change of its uh, behavior over time. Furthermore, the study also aims to build a conceptual model that is useful for a systematic examination of the effectiveness of policy measures on battery swapping development and gaining towards uh, a profitable battery swapping industry. Therefore, the study utilizes the system dynamics as a tool to build a conceptual model of the battery swapping industry development. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, when the system of interest has been identified, the stakeholders relevant to the system can, can also be identified. According to the Presidential Regulation Number 55 of 2019, there are several stakeholders involved in the realization of the profitable battery swapping industry. Each stakeholder has its, role, has its own roles and responsibility. We can see the details of the stakeholders in this slide. Okay, next slide, please. According to the Presidential Regulation Number 55 of 2019, the coordination team on the acceleration program of battery vehicle for road transport has been appointed to be the responsible party in this acceleration program. Therefore, the team is the problem owner. Uh, also, the battery traffic station development has been one of the problem owners' interest in order to increase the electric motorcycle adoption. Hence, the profitable battery swapping industry is the goal. A sustained battery swapping industry means a profitable battery swapping industry. Consequently, the problem owner does not only concern on the number of electric motorcycle users and the battery swapping industry's profitability, but also on the number of battery swapping users. There are a number of policy measures that can be taken by the problem owner. However, since the study only focuses on battery swapping industry development, the policy measures will be regarding the battery swapping industry development only. Moreover, as mentioned before, battery pack standardization here in COSID is considered important to tackle the challenge when developing a battery swapping industry. Next slide, please. The CLD explains how the system works. Uh, this is the first loop, uh, battery swapping user loop. This loop explains that the number of battery swapping users depends on the number of electric motorcycle users and the battery swapping station capacity. The increase of battery swapping user number will increase the company's projected demand. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, the battery, man battery maintenance cost loop. Uh, this loop explains that the increase in the number of available batteries means more maintenance costs. The increase in maintenance cost will affect the, the total cost positively. Unfortunately, the increase in total cost will decrease uh, profitability. You have three more minutes, yeah? Okay, thank you for the reminder. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this loop explains that the more cost of battery procurement and distribution means the more total cost. The increase in total cost will decrease the company's profitability. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this loop explains that the increase in the number of batteries uh, ran will increase the electricity cost since the batteries need to be charged uh, and the electricity cost will positively affect the total cost. The increase in total cost will decrease the company's profitability. Okay, next slide please. This loop explains uh, that the number of available, available uh, batteries is very dependent on the battery procurement and distribution and also the number of recycled battery. Uh, the increase on the number of available battery will increase the number of batteries ran. Okay, next slide, please. This is the rent price loop. Uh, this loop explains that the rent price of batteries depend on uh, company's projected demand and the company's total cost. The decrease of rent price uh, of batteries will increase the number of battery swapping user, which will then affect the demand rate positively. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this loop explains that the number of battery strand and the rank price of batteries will increase the company's revenue of battery strand, which will then increase the company's total revenue. Next slide, please. This is the last loop. This loop shows that the increase in the number of battery strand means the increase in the number of recycled battery uh, that will increase the company's revenue of battery recycling. Next slide, please. Uh, so, the interaction among the system elements that influence the profitability of the battery swapping industry forming four reinforcing loops and four balancing loops. The interaction will influence both problem owner and the stakeholders uh, through the system of output that reciprocate with their response to support and manage the realization of profitable battery swapping industry. The policy measures taken by the problem owner are expected to achieve the goal that has been set. Moreover, the model conceptualization in this study is expected to help formulate stock and flow diagram of this battery swapping industry development problem. From this study, we can conclude that the potential user of electric motorcycle and the battery swapping capacity are the key variables in the system as they can influence the number of battery swapping user and electric motorcycle user directly, as well as the demand rate and unit rent price indirectly. Okay, that marks uh, the end of my presentations. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nadira. Um, so, I would invite for the audience for um, asking questions to the presenter. This is very interesting research, actually, uh, and uh, has a, a quite novel uh, research about the battery swapping in Indonesia. Any question? Okay, uh, please, uh, Ms. Dineka Putri. Hello? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Andri. And I would like to ask you about the actor involved in the system. Uh, I see that in the system diagram, you input uh, the coordination team or uh, the coordination mm. team, but you uh, you didn't mention the coordination team in the uh, slide of who are involved. Uh, I mean, oh. yeah. Well, uh, why is that? Uh, okay. Uh, actually. Uh the coordination team uh, on the acceleration program of battery vehicle for road transport is the part of the government of Indonesia. So, uh, I mean, uh, the government of Indonesia is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the coordination team is uh, specific because the in the regulation, uh, presidential regulation number 55 of 2019, uh, the, it says that uh, the coordination team uh, is the party who is responsible, but in uh, in the larger scale, uh, it can be said that it's the government of Indonesia scale. Okay, so uh, they will they will uh, they will be responsible, but later on they will uh, also participate in uh, making regulation, right? As yes. the part of Indonesia government. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any question? Any other questions? No? Okay, maybe uh, I would like to ask question to uh, Ms. Nadila. Uh, okay. How far is your research now? I mean, is it a conceptual model, but uh, maybe you can also give some uh, clue or indication uh, whether your model already works or not. Uh, okay, actually, uh, I think it's still uh, the simple one, but uh, in the stock flow diagram, I think the process is the iterative, iterative you know, you back and forth, uh, you see the causal diagram and stock flow diagram. So, uh, this is still an ongoing research. Uh, I still develop the model now. You are still working with your, let's say, stock flow and diagram yes. model. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Success with your research. Uh, I think you. we can move uh, to the next uh, presentation. But before we start with the the last presentation yeah, by 
uh, oh, no, 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 not the last presentation. I think we still have two more presentation. Before we continue with the next presentation, I would like to remind you that after the uh, all the presentation, uh, so we will do a, a, a virtual uh, photograph, yeah, a virtual uh, photo together. So at the end of the session, I would like to ask you to invite you to um, to turn on your video so we can uh, capture the the photo because uh, this is also part of the report to the um, uh, the publisher. Okay, next presentation will be from Miss um, Adisti Suparno and uh, Romalani Ardi. It's about design of serious simulation game SSG as learning media for the industry 4.0 in Indonesian manufacturing. Okay, the time and floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mr. Andre. Can I see? Ah, okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Adisti Suparno. Today, I am going to present my paper with Mr. Ar Romadani Ardi about design of serious simulation game for Industry 4.0 Roadmap in Indonesian Manufacturing. Next, please. This is our outlines. Uh, let's begin with introduction. Next, please. Okay, uh, industry 4.0 is a strategy to overcome mega trend. Based on surveys about industry 4.0 in Southeast Asia in 2018, the, there is a 93% firm are optimist about industry 4.0, but only 13% start the transformation. Based on research in 2019, Indonesian manufacturing barriers are high investment costs, the problem of complexity in integrating it, and lack of management support. But there are also step-by-step -step maturity levels to achieve Industry 4.0, from basic computerization to complex decision-making. The difference of understanding needs to be approached with a learning media, which in this research, we are using Serious Simulation Game, or SSG. Serious simulation game is a reliable approach to understanding complex system. It's free from doubts about failure and can change thinking models. And also it have uh, three philosophy with uh, really uh, reality, meaning, and play, which is fun. Next, please. Uh, we will... In okay, next is literature review. Industry 4.0 is a new model of operation that impacts the relation between company and employee because employee also the player of Industry 4.0 transformation. The driver of Industry 4.0 is megatrend, digital, and physical technology. One of physical technology example is additive manufacturing or we usually know as 3D printing. And for digital technology is called, as mentioned before, there are many maturity level in industry 4.0. This maturity level will not only cover technology but also worker competency. First level is computerization, where the company start to use machine for safety concern and consistency. Second level is connectivity, where widely used business application are all connected. Third level is feasibility, enabling process capture from beginning to the end with large number of data points. Fourth level is transparency. The company start to understand why something happened and use the understanding to produce knowledge. In fifth level is predictive. The company is able to simulate different future scenario in and identify the most likely ones. Sixth level is adaptability. Continuous adaptation allows a company to delegate decision to IT system. Industry 4.0 start from level 3. There is other related works from awareness game that are already maxed by Mortensen on 2019. 
in this paper the the serious simulation game talking about the tech, the industry 4.0 drive technology next please for methodology next please we are using lucas game design framework this research occurred until third step we also did interviews with some experts on industry 4.0 in indonesia there are some insights for developing country especially in indonesia first one is upgrade the current resource is important to make improvement with low investment and second one is technology without the correct resource is a waste the third one not all technology should be applied and the fourth one is knowing pain point is important pain point is root cause issue that makes the company hard to improve next please for model development as mentioned before we are using game design framework from Lucas. the first step is analyzing the elements of real system. The elements are technology and resource where both of them work with the actor. Each actor have different working target. With the operation manager output focusing with the finished good, well the business side focusing for the profit. This will hinder the transformation to Industry 4.0. Next, please. For the second step is defining the overall aim of the game. The goals of player are determination, coordination, and consistency in decision making. The achievement are maturity level and low gap between expected and actual profit. So this game provides the decision-making strategy of industry 4.0 transformation following maturity level with coordinating of the player. Next, please. The third step is deciding which element of reality underpin the real-world problem as well as the aim of the game. Based on Herzog's philosophy of making game, there, there, there are three elements of game reality meaning and play reality is experienced by how the roadmap is laid out with complexity risk and limitation of time and money meaning with a clear goal to achieve maturity in this game will be until maturity level four and the player with the pro operation and business department should coordinate and collaborate the play element with challenge and strategy to achieve their goals. Next, please. Okay, you have three more minutes, yeah? Okay. Next, please. This is a conceptual model of series simulation game with general input of manufacture and the analyze process of the issue start from the pain point and finish with potential resource and technology to improve it. The decision strategy give feedback to the player which give, Im give impact to manufacture process again. The learning point of the this game is current situation, target evolution, and gap analytics. Decision making in applying resource and technology of industry 4.0 and under understanding the balance with between department operation and business for making strategy. Next, please. This is the game of overview. This game is about gear component companies with operation and business department role. This game is recommended to for two player with four maturity level. Game master is needed to guide the game and event because this is a board game. This game still focus on production to customer demand. The opportunity comes from government and academics. Next, please. In this game, production will be simulated by making puzzle. Resource is needed to unlock the technology and maturity indicator. 
technology will give impact for production process and maintenance issue will impact to the time to make my puzzle and quality issue will impact to the puzzle face up or down with the with by default all puzzle are facing down next please next please for the conclusion, this research is designed serious simulation game as teaching tool for industry 4.0 transformation roadmap in Indonesia. Conceptual model provides generic input and outputs. Game logic for working target provides in technology resource and cash flow which simulated in making puzzle for production process. This game concept need to be evaluated and confirm the game mechanic, the consequence of real elements the role of the game and complete game model. Okay. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Ms. Adisti. Uh, interesting uh, presentation. So I would like to invite the audience uh, for question and answer. Is there any question? Okay, maybe I I have one uh, remark uh, question. Um, do you also design like uh, the SOP, like a standard operation procedure uh, for proceeding the uh, the SSG itself? I mean, how will you invite the stakeholders, for example, and whether there is any uh, step or procedure uh, to play the game with the stakeholders mm. okay uh, actually this game is designed for the employee of the manufacturer which is uh, around manager above so the the sop is about uh, i still not make it but actually we can invite them to play the, the game or something like educating event in industry for point all to make this understanding. So it's kind of like a, a future research? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we can uh, proceed with the next uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Adisti. Uh, I wish you uh, good luck with your research uh, and thanks for coming to App for Us 2020. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Okay, uh, now the last presentation for uh, today, yeah, for our uh, session is from Mr. Pandu Ariplaksana. It's about conceptual model of analyzing risk in a fuel gas supply system on LNG fuel gas vessel. So you have uh, 10 minutes for presentation and five minutes for question and answer. So the floor and time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Pandri, for the time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So it's just last January this year, the IMO or International Maritime Organization start enforcing the regulation to reduce the sulfur oxide emission from a ship or vessel down from 3.5% to 0.5%. So as a result, in 2016, there are 75 LNG fuel gas ships, not including the LNG carriers in operation, while 84 others are being built. So the Hellenic shipping in the last article in 2019 in February, just one year before the IMO implementation, state that there were 143 LNG fuel gas vessels in operation and further 135 on order. So with the increased number of the vessels adopting the LNG SF, their fuel gas, then the risk analysis on the early stage of design is become very crucial. Next. Next presentation, okay. Oh, this is the outline of the presentation. Next. Okay, next. Okay, 
So there will be three main options for the vessel to comply with the IMO new sulfur cap. So the three options are including the use of the low, low sulfur uh, fuel oil, utilize, utilize the existing uh, heavy fuel oil with the scrubber technology, and use of the LNG as the alternative fuel. So as mentioned earlier, the LNG as a fuel in the ship showing a significant growth. So the stricter rules on engine exhaust emission, the use of the LNG as a ship fuel become a, a promising alternative solution. Next. So based on the continued growth in the adoption of the LNG fuel gas vessel, it has been, uh, it, which is, has been increased significantly, especially after 2020 implementation. And as a, quest, and as a consequence, we need to ensure that the FGSS as one of the critical components is assessed in risk assessment to ensure safe operation of the vessel. Next. So the possibility of the gas leak can cause a fatal things. So the IMO, along with the uh, uh, other classification society, has established the rule uh, regulation to ensure the safe operation of the F FGSS for LNG carriers and L LNG fuel gas vessels. So in this case, the like uh, the classification society like ABS or DNV, they are promoting the use of the FME failure mode and effect analysis as a method to determine the critical components. Next. So FME is one of the method or technique in risk management in verifying the reliability and security aspect of a product or system that is commonly used in various industry. So as you can see, all analysis, uh, this is the risk analysis approach related to the LNG vessels. Then, but uh, the all analysis in this, uh, the previous uh, study, they don't consider the relationship of the nonlinear variables in the assessment of the risk. Next. So the risk even are naturally not static and over require dynamic risk mitigation measures. So there's something uh, like uh, some issue with the FME. One of them is a, is a lack of the uh, traditional method that is, uh, uh, it is, it is, uh, uh, it's only rely on the RPN. So that's uh, it's, uh, the, one of the uh, uh, researchers state that the, that the main weakness of the traditional FME is the result, which is RPN, cannot be used to measure the effectiveness of the mitigation plan. So to address the gaps, so by using the system dynamic modeling, so it can offer and can capture the dynamic complexity of the system under investigation, such as the FGSS. So this study is aimed to propose a risk analysis framework using the FME method and a dynamic system approach. Next. So this uh, matrix showing the different study related to the risk analysis framework that has combined traditional risk assessment with the system dynamic. This then uh, as a, as a, based on the matrix, the combination of the traditional risk assessment, which is showing that not all aspects can be covered, especially in terms of the design phase, operation, long-term operation, and cost impact, maintenance strategy, and policy or decision making. Next. So the novelty of the framework lies with the FVMA as a risk analysis tool used and combined with the system dynamic to conduct an FGSS risk assessment on LNG fuel gas vessel. Next. So now the meteorology. So next. So this is the FVMA based conceptual model risk analysis model. So FVMA we identify the critical component that identify the failure occurrence. And then next is we develop the uh, causal, uh, causal loop diagram and define the system diagram. So the model will simulate the extent of the effectiveness of the recommendation that, which, that are recommended in the reducing the effect of the failure and see the possibility of decreasing the occurrence of critical system failures over time. Next. So this is the concept model of the system dynamic. Why is system dynamic? So system dynamic is very useful for managing the complex process that involve a change over time and are dependent on the feedback transmission and receive of the information using causal loop diagram to represent the causal relationship between the variable. And as mentioned earlier, 
a lot of the traditional uh, system um, uh, traditional risk uh, uh, approach that combine using this uh, system dynamic. Next. So this is the, the, the cost of the diagram. So there are four enforcement, reinforcement loop and four balance loop that all will help to reduce the possible probability of failure. Okay, next. So the system diagram of the risk analysis model for FGSS. So on this, this is on the system diagram, after all this uh, uh, is materialized as a groundwork for developing the system dynamic to show the relationship on how the relevant actors correspond to the problem. So this system diagram provides the reciprocal relationship of the overall system perspective. It also distinguishes the system under study with other variables like exogenous input, instrument policy, and the outcome. Next. You have three more minutes. Okay. This is a case study. So in general, this is a generic to show the process of distributing the LNG out of the tank using styrene pump all the way to the combustion engine. Next. So this is a sample. Okay, next. Okay, this is a sample of how the FME is used in analyzing the FGSS. Next. So FME as a risk analysis tool for FGSS is used to analyze the FGSS consists of the high pressure fuel gas pump and vaporizer, etc. So the proposed risk analysis framework can be applied to FGSS LNG fuel gas vessel. Next. So first is to we identify the critical system through the brainstorming, obtain the highest RPN, and develop the mitigation plan. Next. So this is the, the, the develop the conceptual model. So based on this, the diagram system is used as basis for developing the dynamic system model to provide the research reciprocal relationship from the perspective of the overall system diagram. Next. So this is the, right, we have a four enforcement loop. Next. Yeah, four reinforcement first loop. Next. Yeah, and three balance loop. Next. And then this is a policy instrument that, uh, that apply on this system dynamic. So we supply our selection criteria, establishing the maintenance regime, employ high skilled personnel, and improve the design reliability. Next. So as a conclusion, next. So the proposed method improve the risk analysis for the FGSS of LNG fuel gas vessel using the combined combination of the FME and system dynamic. So the framework used to simulate the effectiveness of the recommendation made in FME, especially related to the cost incurred when carrying out the mitigation plan to resolve the issue. Yeah, next. Okay, so I try to, I this is the most famous quote, that all models are wrong, but some are useful. So hope my model could contribute to enrich the economic transitions as well as industrial practice. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Pandu, for your presentation. Um, so I would like to invite uh, the audience uh, for raising question or maybe some comments uh, on uh, Mr. Pandu research. Is there any question or maybe remarks? No, so maybe I should ask you. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Okay. Andri? Oh, yeah, please, yeah, please sneak in. Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Pandu, I want to ask, uh, what do you think the most benefit of your model compared to the previous method? Okay, thanks, uh, Niken. The most benefit mo uh, that I can, I, can, I, can, I can claim for this model is that we can see uh, all of almost all of all, of, all factor which is uh, cons consists from the design stage all the way to the maintenance uh, operation and also we can we can ensure that the, the the client which is the ship owner they will not spend the, the single dollars without the without the, the the know that they will they will they will know that they will ensure that they are they are they will uh, they are, they are, their mitigation will can can contribute to the and the result in the reduce of the probability of failure. 
So it's covered the whole process from the start till the end. Ah uh, yes, this is also to address the some of the lack of the uh, factor, which is uh, uh, done by the previous research. With some of them, they also have that they have the causing cure, but they don't they don't cover the design stage. They cover the design stage, but they don't have the mitigation uh, 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 maintenance strategy. They have a maintenance strategy, but actually they don't have. Uh, they don't provide uh, like a, a framework for the for the management or for the ship owner in this case to make a decision. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Nikan, for your question. Okay, uh, I think uh, I don't have uh, any more more question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pandu, for your presentation. Okay. We can thank you, Pandu. And the session, but before we end the session, uh, I would like to invite all the audience um, for having a virtual uh, photo. So please uh, turn on your video camera. Okay, the operator will take the picture. Yeah. Okay, ready? That all? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to inform you that uh, all the presentation and your paper uh, after this uh, uh, will be proceeding uh, proceeded for the uh, proceedings of uh, from the SEM. We hope that uh, the uh, the publication process uh, will not take so long, and then it will be indexed uh, in Scopus. So um, for the next uh, agenda, then we still have uh, uh, so we will have break until twelve twenty. Yeah, uh, and then uh, there will be another parallel session. Uh, so you are uh, also invited to the another parallel session. And at two o'clock, uh, all participants uh, are requested to join the event uh, to, through the link that uh, already provided to you. So we will have uh, another keynote speech yeah, from uh, Professor uh, Holger Kohl at uh, two at uh, yeah, at 1410. Yeah, so uh, at two o'clock uh, in the afternoon, uh, we will have another keynote speech from Professor Holger Kohl. So thank you very much for joining this session and joining the uh, Up for Ice 2020. I hope all of you success with your research and your uh, paper will be uh, published in the Up for Ice uh, proceeding with ACM. Thank you very much. So we will, I will end up uh, this uh, session.